Good morning. Well, or good whatever time of day it is for you where you happen to be right now. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did a show and tell of the lightsaber that I built uh, back in the mid-90s after traveling to the Lucasfilm uh, uh, Behind the Myths exhibition at Yerba Buena Art Center here in San Francisco. Uh, I took a snapshot of this, made some measurements, and built this on lunch hours while working for Jamie Heineman in commercial special effects. Uh, in the comments of that video, a lot of you asked and requested that I show myself building uh, a lightsaber like that from scratch, which I think is a terrific idea, and I'm totally going to do it. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to walk you through the story, and I'm going to build it as if I had to build it today with similar resources. Like I have reference material for the uh, actual Luke's lightsaber that is perfect, but I'm not going to use it. I'm actually gonna show you how I would do this if I didn't have access to enough information. The first thing you should know is that back in 1995, while working for Jamie, I was making like, yeah, I wasn't making very much money. And so for me to go get a $35 chunk of aluminum was significant. Like that was a significant expense to me. I had to think about it and like talk to my then girlfriend about it and like save up for it. And so when I did, I wanted to be really, really careful. Uh, this was like a, a, a holy prize when I realized, oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna go get a piece of aluminum and make a lightsaber. And so then I went down to Bayshore Metals and I looked at their scrap pile and I found a piece just like this, about two inches in diameter. This is standard 6061 aircraft aluminum. Um, and yeah, it was like 35 bucks. And I just remember that really, that expense really kicking my butt back then. So uh, I wanted to get this right. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through my computer machinations for doing a build like this. I'm gonna find a picture of Luke's lightsaber. I am going to isolate it and blow it up, but I'm gonna try doing this without using any special software. So let's see, let's see how I do. Let's see how we do. Let's get into it. Uh, first things first is, yeah, that's my baby Yoda. What of it? He's helping out today. Uh, let's see here. First things first is Luke's lightsaber. Um, great. Okay. This, <laughs> look, I mean, it's, it's a bonus. Yeah. Here is an auction photo of Luke's lightsaber. There we go. That, that's fantastic. That is exactly the kind of reference we want. All right, so uh, I'm gonna save this image to my desktop, and then uh, I'm gonna use Apple's Preview. Their, you know, Preview is a photo viewing program they have. Oh, are you really not gonna let me save this image? Save image as? No, okay. All right, here's a trick. Uh, there are websites that won't let you save photos off the website. What you can do is you can go to view, in, uh, at least in Google Chrome for the Mac. You can go to view, scroll down the view menu to developer, and go to view source. Then look at the source, and what you're looking for is find Luke, Luke. Yeah, Luke Lightsaber, there we go. Um, in the source code, you can find the link to the picture without the web machinations that keep you from being able to download it. Yeah, this doesn't take too long. Seriously, great little technique. Um, save image as, okay, desktop. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna print this out. I'm gonna print this out onto paper. And yeah, so I kind of got that working and I'm not sure exactly how. Uh, this is a tutorial in making, not in, in web resource management. My apologies. Um, it's confusing sometimes. It, it can be, look, this is one of my difficulties with, with, uh, with Pinterest is being able to save good high resolution images off of stuff. They don't make it simple. Uh, so I frequently do my Google searches with a minus sign in Pinterest so it doesn't include them in the mix because I find them so annoying. 
Sorry, Pinterest, you're fine for assembling groups of stuff, but when it comes to the kind of research I do, you're, you're, you're often anti-helpful. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna print this out, print, uh, on my, uh, on my print, oh, I think I printed it to the printer at my house, hold on. Yeah, that's the one I want, okay. I'm gonna go get the printout. Okay, I have my lightsaber printed out. I don't think it's the right size, and sure enough, it's not. Um, I need to get this the right size. So how do I do that? Well, here's what I, ah, okay. So uh, here's where we're hoping to get to. We're hoping to get to a printout that shows precisely how long the lightsaber is. And luckily, for us, on auction sites, they often list some critical dimensions. And I think those are fairly safe to follow for a reasonable amount of accuracy. Obviously, you know, some conservator is just gonna go, oh, okay, this lightsaber is 11.75 inches long. That's totally reasonable. It might actually be 11.76235 inches long. That's the kind of thing a conservator is not gonna worry about as much as a prop replicator sometimes, but we have a measurement. So we know that we want this to be 11.75 inches long and it's currently only 10 inches long. How are we going to translate those two things to get them to give us numbers we need? I'm glad you asked. We're gonna do a little math here uh, on my channel. So the actual dimension is 11.75. And the dimension that we currently have is 10 inches. So we need to blow this up by a certain percentage to, to we need to, this is 10 inches long and we need to blow it up by a certain percentage to get to 11.75. Well, this math is really easy. 11.75 divided by 10 equals 1.175. That is 117.5%. 117 percent. If I multiply 10 inches by 117.5, you see how the number works? It's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, how can this be, how can this formula help you in your day-to-day -day life of prop replication? I'm going to give you this simple formula. Um, when you want to scale up in a single dimension, let's say you want to scale from 10 inches up to 11.75, you simply take the bigger number and divide it by the smaller number. That's when you want to scale up. So 11.75 divided by 10 equals 117.5%. When you want to scale down, you take the smaller number and divide it by the bigger number. You do the reverse operation. And so for instance, for if you wanted to take something that was 11.75 inches and divide it by 10 inches, you would get, when you divide 10 by 11.75, you get 85%. This is a technique I used hundreds of times a day as a graphic designer back in New York in the 80s, uh, where that was before we had computers, we did everything by hand, and that kind of scaling I did constantly, constantly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to my printer and use its uh, sizing function to blow this up into two parts. I am back from the printer and I have my lightsaber in two pages. So. Uh, this is now 11.75 inches in dimension. You can see it's nice and close to my lightsaber. Um, a note, what I've done here is called tiling because eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper aren't big enough for an 11.75 inch long thing. And I tile a lot, <clears throat> but it's bizarre to me that it's still really, really difficult. For instance, on the Mac, I, it might be different on a PC, but on the Mac, if I wanted to tile something up to like full size me, I have trouble. I still have trouble finding a program that can take an image and let me say, blow this up to 72 inches long and then divide it out into sheets of eight and a half by 11 paper I can print out. I still have to kind of manually do that in Photoshop, which seems 
crazy to me. I know you're saying, why don't you learn how to code and write your own software? I have chosen a different path in life. I am suggesting this right now so that somebody else maybe tells me about the right tiling program to make big posters because I haven't found it and it drives me nuts. I can't believe in this day and age, this is such a simple thing. This should literally be a print function in every print dialogue. How big do you want it? You want it this big? It might take 400 sheets of paper. Yes, that's what I want. Please give me this functionality. Okay. <clears throat> I am... <laughs> that's the end of my rant. I'm going to uh, tape this together. I'm going to cut off this end, tape it together with scotch tape, and start to make some critical measurements off of it. Uh, I have a piece of aluminum that is perfect for it. It is two inches in diameter. Um, that is <clears throat> the tiniest shade too small for the edge of the emitter here. But this is what I was working with back in 1994, 95, uh, and that's what I'm gonna work with today. My emitter will be slightly smaller than normal. I cut this on a diagonal because it makes it easier to find the line. This, by the way, doing this, this is such a classic uh, assistant animator in between move. So on animation, they'll often draw the first pass of the animation on what's called force. They'll draw one keyframe every four frames. And then the assistant animator's job is to go in and draw the frame in between each frame. And I used to do that. And you would do lots of this, this lot A, B testing of your drawing, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Super low res worked every time. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay, so there is our lightsaber. Look at that. This is almost exactly what I was working with way back then. This piece of aluminum is freaking just barely long enough. Wow. I wish I had a slightly longer piece, but I do not. Okay, so what am I going to do here? I think... I can do a cover of the bottom of that. So I could, I could mill. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I could mill the back half of this while I can still hold on to this nice and tight and then put an expanding collet in there and then cover that with a cover plate. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to make that out of copper. I'm just going to mill this monolithically. Okay. Uh, one of the issues I'm going to deal with here, or I'm actually not going to deal with, is called parallaxing. And that is, um, this isn't a perfect plan view of the lightsaber because the camera was in the middle at some distance away, probably on a lens like a 50 or a 70 millimeter lens. Um, but you can see that I can see kind of that at this end I can see sort of under the transmitter and at this end I can see under the hand wheel here. So I'm getting some parallaxing. That means that these dimensions aren't gonna be perfectly accurate. That's okay. That's, that's kind of what we have to deal with sometimes. And that's for real, you know, that's just like, you, you can't really escape parallaxing. You just gotta be able to accommodate for it. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it here. I'm just going to assume that these dimensions all the way down are just gospel. All right, I think I have a, uh, I think I have a rough plan for how to obtain this out of this. It's gonna take a couple of steps because if I had my druthers, I'd have another couple of inches on this, so I'd have a more positive grab. It means I'll have to uh, adjust this a couple of times during the lathing process, and there will be a milling operation, but it should be pretty straightforward. Let's find out. There's that. Now I'm gonna grab this. Oh, I actually, right, I've got a two inch center, cool. So uh, I am going to start milling off 
the back side here. And the first dimension I want is this dimension. What is the outer dimension of these eight uh, crenellations on the end of the lightsaber? And there's the answer to that question. The answer is... One point eight eight inches. Please don't take any of these dimensions as actual canon Star Wars dimensions. I'm getting this wrong in some small ways. I hope I've made that really clear. This is just me doing this as if I was doing it back in 1995, working with the drawings. So 1.88 inches, and this is currently exactly two inches. Yep, to the to the thousandth. Um, what speed am I at? Good speed. All right, I'm going to zero out my DRO. And we get a dimension. Just peel up a little bit. Yeah, that is. So. Perfect. Now, when I want 1.88, minus 1.88 equals 0 0.12, about an eighth of an inch I'm peeling off of this. Um, in general, 120 thou is a lot to pull off of a, uh, is a lot to take off of a piece of aluminum in your lathe. I try and do it about 30, 30, 40 thou at a, at a clip. So 0.12, we'll go to 0.04. We'll I say 0.35, let's try that. And yeah, I'm just trying to get past, yeah, I'm just trying to get past there really, right? Yeah, oh, hang on. Once I get past the where the hand wheel is, I don't need much more, so I can just go to right there. I can, there we go, I can make that mark. 35 thou. Let's just see how it is. It really likes that. Awesome. Okay. Another 35. Oh, another 35. go to uh, 0.12, so we're going to take my DRO to that critical dimension, there we go, and now I'm going to use the, um, the auto feed, because it'll give me a, it'll give me chatter is what it's giving me, what the hell, oh right, because I'm not pulling off the computer. Some of these bits have a certain amount they like to remove, and if you pull off less, you get chatter. It's okay, we can uh, file that off later, those late marks. So we go back and forth. A little bit. One more pass. Okay. Now I'd like to, um, let's just see what I got there. Let me get to one point. Uh, look at that. 1.88, a little bit higher, 1.888. So uh, I'm eight thou over, which is fine. It's kind of exactly where I'd like to be. I sort of make some of my small adjustments here based on giving myself a little room to move. Um, the next thing I wanna do is create the ability to grab this from the inside. I'm going to drill a hole in the end. Uh, first, I am going to... Can I drill this a little bit long? No, I don't think so. Uh, but 
I want to pull it down to a dimension of 1.375 and 0.4n. So I want to level the end first. That's that's the next step. Give myself a center drill. That is, uh, that is four tenths, four, yeah, that's four tenths of an inch deep. That is 1.275 in diameter. Now what we have here is we've got these angles. So what are these angles? And this is one of the reason I love these specific Aloris Universal bits because I can use them to set angles that I want. And I do this pretty much visually. I know that's not necessarily the exact right way to do it, but what the hell. It works for this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna loosen this and I'm gonna get this angle set. See, the other thing is that if you think like a prop maker, you'll notice, hey, look, the angle matches the standard angle that I can reach with an Aloris Universal tool bit. Given that I learned about these tool bits at Industrial Light and Magic, it would seem to follow that they're using the same thing to make the same cut. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna soften this shoulder at this angle. We're going to soften the other side of that shoulder doing this similar thing. I think that's the right measurement. Let me just double check. Oh, right. That's how I was doing it. No, that's one less. Damn close enough for me. Now the question is how wide is that little so you know what I probably wanna do? I probably wanna go in a little farther. Maybe I wanna pull this piece out a little bit and, and machine from here, from here across, getting that critical dimension. Because once I have that, then I can go in and get that shoulder. Now I'm gonna pull out my other universal bit. Leave that one there. And let's see here.
things are going well. I've got the back section roughed out here. I'm about to, uh, and I've got a, 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 a live center here stuck into the end, and I'm about to plane down or lay down most of this material here. Uh, it's gonna be a bunch of auto feeding, uh, and then I'm gonna get in towards making the, all the rest of these, uh, all the rest of those details up here on my thumb side of the saber. <sighs> Later we'll figure out how to actually cut the eight crenellations in the hand wheel here. Famously, the original lightsaber, this was a faucet knob. Uh, I don't have access to such a thing, so I'm gonna have to machine it. But for right now, here's some soothing time lapses of removing lots of material on the lathe. I screwed up again uh, for the like the fourth time. I really, I really messed this up. I, I grr. Here is what happened. Here is the lightsaber that I'm trying to build, and uh, I've made several mistakes about not paying attention. Um, one of them was out. At the emitter, I cut a little too much material off here, so I was going to have to make the emitter a separate part. But now what I did was I messed up this part here because, well, you might even be able to see it on the time lapse that I couldn't see it, but part of my tool holder was, I hadn't set up my orientations correctly and measurements started changing and I didn't realize they were changing because I was forcing the wrong part of the mill, the lathe into the material. I was ending up with, how many, how many, I just, I totally screwed it up. <clears throat> so, I have a choice. I can uh, order a new piece of two inch. I can order a new piece of some two inch rod. It's a new in, two inch aluminum 6061 and start this from scratch in a few days. Or, I can muscle through and adjust to what's happened I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I think that what I'm going to end up doing here is, there are some salvageable pieces of this build right now. I'm going to cut those salvageable pieces off. I'm gonna tap them so that I can connect them later with bits of all thread. I have this other bit of two inch rod, which should uh, afford me enough material to finish this today. I was really hope, here's the problem. I was hoping I would finish this in the first half of the day and get another one day build done today. I, I, there's no need, there's no need. I could do it tomorrow, but I started counting my money and it's not like I'm making money. It's not like I'm, I don't mean actually counting the money. I mean like when you're at the poker table and you get a good hand and you start counting your money, that's when you're about to lose because you are not paying attention to everyone else in the room. That's what happened to me here. I was counting my money. I was like, oh, we're gonna get this done fast. It's gonna be fast, because I had my eye on the wrong ball. Okay, let's salvage what we've got and make something better, shall we? Okay. <laughs>
Okay, uh, that wasn't as bad as I thought. I have now the better part of a lightsaber with a removable bottom, and that actually makes this an easier task because what I've got to do is create the correct hand wheel crenellations in the back of this. So it's time to move over to the mill briefly. I love the smell of freshly machined aluminum. Um, it's coming along nicely. Yeah, I'm quite, uh, I'm provisionally pleased. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So I need to machine eight crenellations off of this, which is four on the cardinal points and four on the halfway splits of cardinal points. So every 45 degrees, I could pull out a, a, a rotary head that I've got with a center and set this up to do that. But that is a lot of work. And I have an easier way to do it, which is to use what's called a collet block. This is a collet block and I can actually wait right there. Since I've got the 3 8 uh, bolt sticking out of here, I've got a 3 8 5C collet. I stick that in there. I stick this in the collet block and I can tighten it down. Hang on. Come on, cooperate. There you go. That's what I wanted. So I can tighten this down and then I can chuck this into my mill and I can get one, two, three, four because I can just turn it for each operation. Then if I carefully turn this exactly 45 degrees, and I'm pretty sure I can get there close enough by eye and some various measuring tools I have around here, then I make four more cuts, and I believe that's how I did the first, the original one that I did. We shall see. I didn't think through the forces involved. I didn't think through the forces involved. That's what I didn't do. I had uh, this little 3 8 bolt chucked in here. Felt like really tight, but I'm going to hit it with an end mill that's carving off material. It just made the whole thing spin. So uh, this will be a mar. I, I can clean that up a little later. I can, I can, I can, I can clean that, but still the question remains how to mount this. How do I mount? How do I work this? You may ask yourself, where is that beautiful house? You may ask yourself, where does that highway lead to? My gosh, I was watching um, David Byrne the other day. Oh my God. His new concert film, the one directed by Spike Lee. Dude, it's amazing. David Byrne, just one of my heroes. Let's see here. All right. That was, that was lame and extreme. I'm unhappy. V-block this. And certainly that gives me more encryption. I'm gonna have to redo the center. Oh, sorry. New center. I mean, I guess I could do layout on this piece here. And yeah, that'll be good enough. I, that has to have been how I did it before. I'm going to do some layout here of the, of the points that I need. Yeah, and um, I'm going to use some vertical squares to get myself to the right uh, orientation. Okay, to the workbench.
That is a good canvas. Thought this was gonna be a super fast build and that's why I got boned. That's why I'm ending up in this position because again, I'm, I'm trying to rush through. Such, such my bailiwick, trying to rush through things. <laughs> this is the point at which I would say to Gunther or Joey, maybe just leave me alone for half an hour. This is the point. This is that exact point. And they would be like, okay. And they would back away. <laughs> but here we are. All the warts and warts and all. So uh, let me just get this guy held in here. Come on over and take a look. Excellent. There's my center finder. I gotta find my scribes. There's my scribe. There you are. Hello, sweetie. It's good to see you again. <sighs> There's my scribe. So, we are going to scribe a line across. Now we're gonna scribe a line up, but how are we going to make sure that it's perfectly square? That's a really excellent question. Well, I suppose, yeah, that's the thing to do it. All right. Mm-hmm, there we go. Okay, let's, good. Now that you're in position, let's hold this in its right orientation. Great. Now I have the four cardinal points. I need the others. So now I need, I need a 45. I suppose I can draw a line here and split it. That's not as accurate as I would like, but if I get that right, We're talking plus or minus like a few thou on this. It's an aesthetic thing. 0.95. So half of 0.95 is 0.475. Is that right? 0.95 divided by 2 equals 0.475. Hey, I can do math. Sometimes. Okay, so that. See how I like that. That is freaking close. Let's see what I can get from that. See how it all looks. I'm gonna do the same right angle for these as I did on the first one. Mm-hmm, yeah. Hey, I really appreciate all the advice you folks are currently giving me in the comments, even though that's in the future from now, about better ways to do this. 
That looks damn good. I'm, I think I can, I think I can work with that. That is within a degree or two of exactly 45 degree increments all the way around the 360. So, find the center again, start milling, and then after I mill it all, get this on the lathe and fix that dumb chatter. Grrr. Here we go. Yeah, really nice and exact. Yes, I like that. So, I'm going to call that. We are in. Let's get back our edge finder. And I'm gonna use the edge finder here on my V blocks because I'll get a more better reading. Ah, okay. Redo the edge, here we go. Ah, I see the problem for you. That dimension, dead smack center of that. No matter how much I move this this way, it's still gonna be centered this way, which is exactly what I wanted. So, edge finder. Go home, don't you wanna go home? I'm gonna use my 5 sixteenths. Hey, okay, so that's a really bad thing to do with a square, the thing I just did. I mean, luckily it fell on a wooden floor, but uh, how much should I trust that? Let's see here. I'm behind the camera right now. I happen to be on my soapstone surface plate. I'm just checking square. Yeah, that's good enough. So double check this guy. I like his position. I do, I do, I do. So he's in. Now we're gonna bring this down. Right, I'm gonna bring the nut up. Yeah. And I'm just going to bring it all the way through. Is that what I'm really going to do? Yeah, that is exactly what I'm going to bring it all the way through. Um, yeah. First cut is away. Huzzah! Next cut. I think we could do this as a time lapse, don't you? This has been a journey. Uh, so let's just talk about where I started. I started by grabbing an auction photo of Luke's lightsaber here. And 
using it as a plan view for how big this thing should be. Um, and, and for reference, in 1994, I made this on lunch hours in Jamie's shop from a, 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 a snappy pictures of, of uh, the self-same lightsaber. Okay, literally from like a, a disposable camera's pictures of the self-same lightsaber. Um, here is where I've gotten thus far, and it's pretty good. It's way off. Uh, and that is, I, I, I guess this was the exercise that demonstrates how far off one can get. I, and frankly, I'm, part of me wants to keep grinding away at this, but um, I'm going to have to let this one go. <laughs> Uh, because, okay, um, this just is actually less accurate to me. It's less correct looking in its current state. I know I have to slice that off, but I, and I will. It's less correct looking than, than the one I made in 94. And, and maybe that's the thing is like, I know just enough to be dangerous, but, and, and, hmm. Like, I definitely don't want to disappoint you, the audience. I wanted to have, like, made a perfect lightsaber and be like, yeah, I nailed it. But I didn't. For the record, this is a perfect lightsaber. This is uh, an exact measured copy of what, this, of what this is, okay? Here's the thing. Take a look at how different it is. Oh, yeah. Look, 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 look. Okay, so, oh, maybe you can't see it. Fascinating, on camera, it looks dead accurate, but in fact, if I line up the tops, the bottoms are off by like three quarters of an inch. That's where we're talking about parallaxing, right? Those look like side by side, like great, but they're not. No, this is, <laughs> it's not correct. So. Um, when I hold my 1994 original up to this, you can see the ways in which it's longer. So clearly I was working with a similar kind of parallaxing. All the topological details are there, as I stated. And then in the one that I've built today, um, also longer. So in fact, what I find the most interesting part of this exercise is that these guys are pretty freaking close. Like these guys, and they're way closer than they ought to be. And that actually follows because I was working with the same kind of refer reference material, a single photograph, which again, because of lens distortion, right? It's a flat object photographed by a spherical lens. So you're getting this kind of wrap here. And that means that all sorts of dimensions change, even from here to here. This is only a few inches, four or five inches. And yet dimensions can change when you're dealing with the sphericity of the lens that you're taking the picture of. <sighs> Let's take this all the way to its end and call it, um, and it is not the build I was hoping to have gotten done today. It is less a terrific lightsaber than I was hoping. But I mean, part of one of the reasons I got to let this one go is because I got all the lightsabers. I, I have all of my favorite lightsabers and I'm really happy with them. And this isn't like, there is no line standing between me and the perfect lightsaber in my life because I, I have them, I have a shelf full of them. So I'm totally cool. So this one is going to be the the object lesson in the errors that can be introduced from the reference material. I didn't think that was what this build was gonna be about. And yet that's what it's about. The OCDs among us are just gonna to have to let this one lie. Uh, okay, so uh, let's cut off this tip and we will chuck this into the lathe again and then we're gonna do uh, some steel wool on it and then we're gonna do a uh, final polish and then we'll throw a little spray paint on there and we'll call this one. I am not gonna make the, um, the activation box on this. It's a whole nother, it's a whole nother persuasion that I'm not gonna get to today. Um, 
You know, I think this what's going to happen is this is going to make me better at interpreting photographic data later down the line. I will be able to understand more because I've never done a kind of an A-B testing like this. Okay, enough of my chatter. Let's get back to the machines. There, there's the drawing I started with. There's the lightsaber I made from the drawing. Here is the lightsaber that I made in 1994. And here is the lightsaber that is all of the correct dimensions. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of different things going on. Lots, lots of different things going on. Per usual, the build I thought would be an easy, quick and dirty, turned out to be long and just a little bit brutal. Um, I, I certainly could have done better, but we're gonna leave it like that. That's, um, however, the lessons learned are the lessons learned. I appreciate you guys joining me for this one day build. Here's what I'm going to do. In the next few months, uh, I am going to build myself a personal lightsaber. I have built enough of Canon lightsabers. It's time for me to build one for me. My design, my electronics. Well, I mean, I'll you know, purchase an electronics kit and a blade kit and all that. Uh, but I will machine the, the body of this thing to my specs because I think that's what was missing today. I think I was like kind of doing a demo, but I didn't have enough skin in the game to get it across the line in this way that I wanted to. So I had to realize that a demo was not what I was making. It was more like a lesson in, well, you know, another one of my lessons in <laughs> that less than perfect outcomes. However, I, a lot of information was gleaned today. That, that's, that's how I'm gonna call it. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this one day build. These are, these are the kind of days that happen in every shop. And I will see you guys next time. My hands are filthy. It's awesome. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us on Tested, there are many ways you can do so. One is through paid membership, and there are several tiers of that, each with their own set of unique bonuses. You can follow the links below for that, or you can go to our merch store where we are always coming up with brand new products. In honor of the holidays, we've got our Tested Ugly sweater in both black and we have a white one. We have some brand new patches and this is a particular type that I made a joke about one day and now it's a reality. You know about merit badges. When you're a Cub Scout or a Boy Scout, you get a merit badge for achieving something. Well, Tested now has demerit badges for when you screw something up because that's just as important in learning as getting something right. So this is the badge for when you measure something once and have to cut it twice. <laughs> this is the badge for when you accidentally hook up your electronics wrong and you release the mysterious blue smoke that powers them and they no longer work. And this one here is for when you get your finger caught in the lathe and it almost gets torn off. That might be quite me specific. I hope that never happens to you. These are all designed by Tested's own Jen Schachter and they are not the only patches we're gonna release. In fact, these are just the beginning. If you have ideas for demerit badges that we should release, We'd love to hear them. We also still have our regular complement of posters and they're all back in stock, including my hand-drawn toolboxes. I love seeing pictures you guys send us of these hanging in your maker spaces and your offices, your man caves and your sheds around the world. Get to the store, follow the links below. And hey, some of these might make great Christmas presents for the makers in your life. 
Thanks, you guys. Happy holidays.